guess what, folks? We're in. Hi folks, welcome back to the show and welcome back to our 1920s renovation project. If you've been following along right from the very start when we first picked the keys up to this property, you'll know we have done a lot to this and we have been up against it and we were panicking quite a lot that we wouldn't get everything finished in time for our move-in date. We absolutely had a deadline that we were working to and we only just managed to get the most essential things done in time for our move-in and hence there's a lot of things that aren't done yet and the other slightly weird thing about this video is that we are jumping about in time a lot on the channel as per usual i'm filming this more or less in real time in october and i was really hoping that i'd have a lot of the final jobs done by now because we moved in in July towards the end of July but we have almost instantly started on the extension project and that has been taking up a huge amount of my time so there's a lot of things that are fairly low priority kind of cosmetic jobs and things that we just haven't had time to do yet so what I'm saying is don't judge phase one of the renovation is complete but I've always said this is a two-year project really to get everything completely finished it's a big, big project to renovate a property like this, especially when it's had pretty much zero maintenance for a hundred years and there's been so many kind of under the skin jobs that are really essential to the well-being of the property, but you don't really see them. Things like the water supply, gas supply, drainage, insulation, replastering, all sorts of other things that you just kind of take for granted, but they take a lot of time and money and effort to sort out. Anyway, let me give you the guided tour of where we are at the moment. This is the sort of stuff that you don't see on property shows on the TV. It's not finished, but it's livable. And we are over the moon that we're in. And as I say, we've been in for a few months now and we are very, very happy here. We might as well start with this room since I'm already in it. So this room is my little office or temporary office. This was the third bedroom. Obviously, it's become a little bit smaller because of the bathroom, so you can see where the wall kind of juts in. But eventually, this room is going to become the master bedroom, and that is once we smash through into the extension. So we take this wall out, uh, basically the side of the house will come off. There'll be a great big window kind of here. I need to talk about that in a minute as well. But on the whole, as a little temporary kind of office thing, this works really, really well. Um, again, I might have mentioned it in a previous video, I honestly can't remember, but I was going to paint this end wall, but I quite like leaving it with a rustic kind of half broken paint that was all kind of flaking off the wall and whatnot. It's a bit of a reminder of what we've gone through to get to this point. Obviously, once this all gets knocked through and there's a window in, it'll all be getting replastered. But for now, it's quite a nice little nod to what we've had to go through to get this project done including various just sketches on walls and random holes all over the place no idea what's going on with the plaster up here we didn't do this by the way that's the way the room always was and i'm going to be getting evicted from this room soon because once the extension's done there's going to be a window basically half the window is going to be in this wall and the other half is going to be in the new bit of the extension so we're going to have to as i say knock this entire left hand wall out cut into this wall put the window in so it's all going to get quite interesting if you subscribe then you can see all the future videos about the extension and phase two of this renovation project right we'll start in the hallway there's really not a lot to show you in the hallway We've got this carpet down. There will eventually be hardwood flooring down here. I will talk about that later on. But we will be keeping the stair carpet. I'll show you all that in a minute. But um, the hallway, it's there's really not a huge amount to show you because it's not completely finished. Upstairs in the hall, this carpet's vaguely kind of permanent because it's nice and hard wearing and this'll do the job fine. Do bear in mind that this is all just temporary decor 
We haven't done any of the final coats of paint. There's just absolutely no point until the extension's done because that's going to make such a mess. And that's part of the reason for going for quite a hard wearing carpet here as well. But we've got, if you remember, there was a window over there. That's all gone. We've now got the uh, window here. I haven't put the window sill on yet. That's yet another job that I need to do. But other than that, it's a pretty good space. It works really well. We've got final lighting in and all of that. Carpet fitters have done a really, really nice job. Very impressed with the work from the carpet fitters. So once these have all been painted properly and had their final coat, it will look grand, but this is just primer that's on at the moment. So we'll start with what was the dining room and it now is our temporary kind of bedroom because since we're doing the extension and everything, we don't really have an ex uh, a bedroom at the moment. So this does the job. It's absolutely fine, perfectly respectable bedroom. And uh, yeah, it's it's great. We've got a carpet down here. Uh, the, this carpet is kind of temporary, although it's growing on us. So <laughs> again, the plan is once the extension's done, to run hardwood flooring everywhere downstairs but you can see where the carpet fitters have fitted around the hearth area that I put down. We talked in about that in the previous video. I've got a video coming up about curtains and curtain rails and how to fit them and all that jazz so I'm not going to talk about curtains uh, in this video but uh, yeah those are curtains. The room might look a little bit smallish at the minute with this giant king size bed in it but it is actually a reasonable size room and as I say, don't judge because there's still a lot of work to do here. But for now, as a temporary bedroom, it's fine. This will eventually become more of a kind of study come office type space. And that is really one of the reasons for having the hardwood flooring down because once we've got wheelie chairs and things like that, uh, carpet just gets destroyed. But we'll probably keep this carpet for a little while because there's nothing wrong with it, but it is the cheapest of the cheap carpet you can possibly buy. It's just a temporary kind of measure. And for those who asked as well about whether or not we've wasted money on temporary carpets, I can assure you it was a very, very cheap route to go down. There is a video over on the member zone where I discuss all the costs of this project in a lot of detail, where I go into all the costs of the carpet and everything. So if you want that level of detail, head over to members.costforthandyman.com and you can find all that out on here. It's just too much to go into on here. It would take forever. Into the kitchen and right, this is a temporary kitchen. Again, don't judge. This is probably the best temporary kitchen we've ever had on a renovation project because if you're not aware, if you haven't already seen the plans, again, the most up-to-date plans are over on the member zone. A lot of this stuff, it's a little bit too niche to go into on YouTube, but basically this is going to become a corridor and utility room. There's going to be a wall kind of coming down here and uh, then the utility over on the left here. And then this will lead through into the extension. That window will become a doorway and that will lead through into the proper kitchen, the new kitchen at the back there. There's a whole series of videos coming up about the extension. Bit of a spoiler at the back there, but uh, yeah, watch the space. Don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll be going through the whole extension process. But if you remember, this has had new floor, new electrics, uh, gas supply put in for the central heating, uh, all new drainage, new water, uh, you name it, everything's been done just to get this kind of up to spec, but it is absolutely fine as a temporary kind of kitchen. We don't really have a huge amount of space, so we haven't got enough room for a coffee maker, so we're making use with a little plastic filter holder, and that actually makes really nice coffee, quite impressed by that. And you'll notice that we don't actually have a hob of any description, but what we do have is a little camping gas stove and it works really well as a single ring hob. You're a bit limited in terms of Sunday dinners and stuff like that, but on the whole, this is probably the best temporary kitchen we've had on a project. So don't judge. Obviously, this isn't the final kitchen.
Now, the bathroom, and this was quite a big job, and it's not finished yet either, <laughs> but you can kind of get the general idea. I was gonna do a proper reveal once all the final finishing touches were done, but you'll see that in the bathroom video. I'm making a whole dedicated video about the bathroom. So if you remember, this was literally, it was like a corridor, it was tiny, the bathroom. It didn't have a toilet in, it had a tiny shower, it had a basin and that was about it really. So stripped the whole lot out, took this wall down, made the room wider, new double shower, toilet in, and yeah, we'll talk about this in a lot more detail on the bathroom video. I don't really want to spend forever talking about why I've done things in a certain way, so you will have to wait. If you do have any questions about the bathroom, pop it down in the comments below and I will answer them on the bathroom video. I might even explain these bizarre holes in the ceiling over here, but that's another story for another day. We commonly refer, this is a bongo bathroom now because we've got nowhere else to uh, put my bongo until the studio room's finished, but I think it looks quite good in here to be honest. Needless to say, I still need to do architrave skirtings, trim around the bottom of the shower, uh, we still need to do a second coat of paint, still need to do all the boxing. This needs sorted out down the right hand side of the shower. What else? We need a mirror, uh, various other bits of boxing as well. But again, we'll cover all of that in the bathroom video. All of this is going to get boxed in, so don't judge it the way it is at the minute. But I wanted to very briefly show you, this is for an easy cable run from the loft all the way to downstairs. This will be boxed in with an access panel so that if there's any other electrics going from downstairs to the loft, we can easily run it up this kind of area here. Into my daughter's room and this is a really nice cosy room to be honest. Again, permanent carpets in here. It's only the, the contract mass white on the walls, but it'll do the job for now. Again, there's a video coming up all about curtains and fitting the curtains and whatnot. So not a lot else to talk about in here. Great little room. I'm not really gonna talk about the separate loo because now that we've got the bathroom with a toilet in there and we'll have a toilet in the ensuite, this will probably become just a storage room at some point. At the moment, it's handy having the two toilets, but we don't really need three toilets, so that one will go a journey once the ensuite's done. Into my son's bedroom, and this has got a relatively kind of permanent carpet in here. Nice and cosy. Really nice room, to be honest. Much bigger than the room that I used to have. And it's great. It's very comfortable, very warm very well insulated. Obviously we've uh, insulated into the ceiling kind of area over here. I can't remember if, uh, we've probably covered it on the video at some point, but the, all the ceiling had to come down and we insulated into the rafters and whatnot at the top there. Again, all new electrics, flood wired CAT6, so no Wi-Fi issues to worry about at all. I think it's 500 meg internet all the way at the desktop, so very happy sun. If you remember, this was the fireplace that we had the paint issues on, so you really can't see it. And again, we will do a final coat of paint in these rooms, in the, in the bedrooms. This is just white at the minute. It'll do the job for now, but we will do a, a final coat once we've decided what colour scheme we're going to do, but more than fine for now. And yes, by the way, he's stolen my electronic drum kit while we're waiting on the studio room to be finished. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. And finally, through into the living room. If you remember, the living room, it's had everything done to it. We've ripped out the old fireplace. We've insulated under the floors, new electrics. Again, you name it, we've pretty much done it this room. All replastered and everything anyway. So, once again, don't judge the decor because this is just kind of temporary, but it's fine for now. It's perfectly functional living room, very comfortable, but this is just the cheapest of the cheap white contract mat on the walls at the minute. And again, temporary carpet down. Once the extension's done, we'll be knocking through on this side and that'll 
flow through into what will be kind of the kitchen diner and once we've done that there'll be new flooring that'll run all the way through because we don't want a threshold in the middle of the room so again cheapest of the cheap carpet that we could find just to kind of keep the place nice and snug and warm over the winter period but there will be hardwood flooring going down in here and then we've already got a use for this carpet because we're going to well I'll, I'll save that for a future project but uh, the carpet won't be going to waste i assure you of that Probably the best investment in this room has been the stove. The only small problem we've got with the stove is the sheer amount of heat that it kicks out. I think this is going to be resolved once we open up in the, the kitchen diner. But at the moment you only have to have that on for like 10 or 15 minutes and the room is so hot you can't breathe. And that's even with the temperatures down to like, well, 3 degrees, 2, 3 degrees outside. So. The underfloor insulation is clearly doing the job, but it does mean that you don't really have to have the stove on very often, but it's, it's nice, you know, on cold winter days and things like that. Of course, our living room wouldn't be complete without the projector. We had the projector in the new build, you've seen that before, and it just, we love our movies. We've had this screen for the best part of 10 years now. Let me just turn the projector on and you can actually see it going. I can't show you too much because I'll get done for copyright. Um, I'll just turn the lights off so you can kind of get a better idea because it's a bit bright in here. Obviously, it would normally be evening time when you're watching movies. But yeah, you'll just have to take my word for it when it's actually dark outside or you've got the blind shut or whatever. It looks really good. This projector I'm really happy with. We've had it for quite a long time now, but uh, highly recommended. 90 inch screen, 90 inch motorized screen. The screen was only about 90 quid. I've already made a video all about fitting the projector and the screen. I'll include a link to those below, but great investment if you like your movies. I've yet to tidy up the wiring. I need to put a little brush plate and some trunking up there just to tidy up the wiring for the projector, but you don't really notice it. It's quite high ceilings in here anyway. Obviously spotlights everywhere. Spotlights were really a must in this room because if you have a dangly light, it would end up being in front of the projector. Hence the spotlights, but we do like our spots anyway. Do remember this isn't the finished room. We've yet to put final coats of paint on. We haven't even, this is just primed skirtings at the minute. We haven't even done the top coat on the skirtings because when we do the final flooring, the skirtings all have to come off and then we'll fit the floor, put the skirtings back on again. Uh, and that's after we've done the knock through the extension. No spoilers, don't look over there. Oh, I forgot to mention, we also boarded the loft out as well. And there's not really a huge amount to show you up there. We've got the ventilation from the bathroom going into new vent tiles. We've also got a vent tile into the loft itself. At the moment, I've just left it as an open kind of 110 mil pipe coming into the loft because the loft was getting very, very hot and humid during summer. And I figured just getting a little bit of ventilation up there. I don't want to defeat the object of all the insulation, but at the same time, I think there needs to be a little bit of airflow. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. I'm not entirely sure how much ventilation a loft like that needs. You know, we've got kind of two layers of insulation. We've got the insulation at ceiling level and there's a spray foam insulation as well. If you've got a loft insulated like that, how would you normally ventilate it? Let me know in the comments. We've also got the steel up there already fitted above the bathroom, ready for the extension. There's another one to go in once the extension starts and the roof comes off. That's all for a future video. I'm not going to talk about the back garden too much because we've done pretty much nothing to it other than clearing it and obviously building the studio room and we've covered all that on previous videos. We will, of course, be finding out what's in the shed on a future video. Loads of you have been asking about it. It's a shed that's obviously been untouched for the best part of 60 plus years and uh, hopefully we'll find some treasures in it. Who knows? I am going to be making a separate video about what this cost so if you want to hazard a guess as to what the renovation cost not including the extension all we're talking about is the core renovation to bring the property up to a livable standard how much do you think that cost pop it down in the comments below we'll cover it on a video coming up very very soon if you can't wait for that video you can head over to the member zone and i've already made a very detailed video about the costs of this renovation all split down by project going down into 
every single line item of costs involved in a project like this and there's a lot more to it than you would think. But we will talk about it on a future video so it would be interesting for you to let us know what you think a renovation like this cost. As I say, pop your guesses down below and all will be revealed very soon. So the whole renovation from start to finish took about seven months to get to this stage. So you can kind of say that we started in January and by July we, we had the place pretty much livable. But obviously a lot of cosmetic work still to do. No point in doing the cosmetic work, as I say, until the extension's all done. A lot of people were saying about carpets and things, why have we put carpets in before getting the painting finished? Well, there's no point doing the painting when we're knocking walls out and doing knock-throughs for the extension and new windows going in and all sorts of other things. So there's no point doing the final coats of paint in a lot of the rooms yet. But at the same time, we are living in the property, so we don't particularly want old, dusty floorboards. The floorboards, by the way, they're not in a good enough state to sand, and we did consider just keeping the bare floors, but we want the house to be comfortable. And in the UK, probably 99% of houses have carpets. I know a lot of places in the world, you're not really familiar with a carpet thing, and you do things slightly differently, but in this kind of climate, carpets work very well. It's warm, cosy. A couple of comments from people saying that carpets are dirtier than hardwood flooring or whatever. We are going to have hardwood flooring downstairs, as it happens, but having lived with both, I can assure you that solid floors are dustier than carpets. Solid floors are a dust magnet. We do still hoover our carpets, you know. But anyway, as I say, we've still got a huge amount to do with this property to bring it up to the standard that we want it to be at. It's livable now, very comfortable, but watch this space and you'll see everything else that we're doing. We are very excited. Phase two starts very, very soon, so don't forget to hit subscribe. A couple of other videos to come up in the meantime, as I say, the shared curtain fitting, what caused the dampness at the back of the property, that's quite an interesting one. All to come, so watch this space. For now, folks, as per usual, take care, be nice, look after one another, and I shall see you next time. Tatty bye!